Hey, what's going on everyone? Hope you're all doing well. And in this video, I wanted to talk about making yourself stronger. Now, what do I mean by making yourself stronger? Well, I simply mean there are two types of strength out there, right? Or if you want to consider many types, but I'm going to only talk about two and that's the emotional and physical, right? Physical being the capability of lifting heavy things or doing uh, painful or very strenuous tasks for long periods of time. Right. And that's like a basic definition of what strength is, at least for the physical aspect, you know, determines based upon uh, your attributes, your physical abilities and overall how far you're willing to push yourself to do a certain task. So that in itself is important to remember. Um, and staying strong physically is healthy. It's a good thing. Right. You know, and not everyone is equal in strength. You know, some people are smaller than others. And that's uh, hereditary genetics, or even if the fact that you don't work out because you don't have time, um, those who work out and lift more tend to be, you know, stronger, obviously, because, you know, you, yeah, you put in the work to get stronger. Anyways, but I want to focus more on the mental side of it, uh, mental strength and the, abil the ability to be resilient to a lot of problems and things that exist. So I think for me, mental resiliency is a far better option for things like that and for overall life because you will be test tested i should say physically and mentally a lot of times it's more mental and with the with the modern age of the world where mental health is more of a priority rather than the physical aspect right you know I, as humans we uh, we evolve and grow and one of our biggest weaknesses and strength is uh, mental fortitude or mental stability you know if if i'm not mentally stable how physically strong can i be without it right and i i know there are exceptions right there, there's not it's not just cut and dry you know very gray scaled kind of experience it's if i'm not mentally in the right I'm going to be irrational, right? And I'm going to have irrational thoughts, irrational feelings, and I'm going to do irrational things. And that in itself is not good. It's not good for anybody to have someone who is not all there that can just, that is just going to do something based upon emotional responses, right? And this doesn't have to do with whether you're a man or a woman, because if you experience you know, stressful pain or mental uh, anguish as a man, you know, you're going to you're going to be able to deal with it differently than a woman would be. And and that goes for everybody. Everyone's different and they all have their tolerances. Women tend to have like a much higher uh, pain tolerance and men are not very good at being uh, emotionally intelligent creatures. Some people I've met, I'm not going to say all, but some people uh, I've met who are very immature mentally. Uh, I'm still my my myself I'm still in that boat where I'm learning how to properly understand my emotions. I, I kind of grew up in a um, environment where having an emotional response to everything is kind of looked at as weird, weak, and not good. And you shouldn't do that because it makes you look feminine, right? And and to be fair to, to them and to me, uh, I always thought that as well. You know, I always thought, you know, emotions were girly and not something that were, that was very masculine and then i realized that you know years later here i am a uh, 22 year old realized that you know what men do feel this pain men do cry men do go through emotional pain and torment and instead of being very shut in about it you know uh counseling whether that be going to a therapist a psychologist or even just talking to somebody in general about how you're feeling can greatly improve your mood can stabilize you and create a sense of security. And even if you just want to vent about some problem that you're having and it's emotional, right? Because uh, you can vent all day about work and physical things and about, you know, what's it like to go to the gym and, and almost kill yourself with some weights. You know, that that's, that's in itself something else, but that doesn't really hit the sweet spot that your brain is looking for, right? And by hitting the sweet spot, you know, talking about your emotional... Uh, feelings or your, your feelings of distraughtness or even just problematic behavior that you may be experiencing, I feel like it's important to remain consistent with, um, with your mental health and, you know, go talk to somebody, go be, uh, a, someone who looks for solutions rather than 
finding a problem and not creating a solution. I think right now one of my biggest hurdles is dealing with a uh, a set of longing or I get not a set, but more like a sense of longing, uh, wanting something that I feel like I realistically couldn't be able to support. And everyone goes through that some way, shape or form, uh, whether that be like for family matters, you know, especially for new parents, new parents sometimes feel like they don't have it in them to be parents and it spooks them. Uh, I can't speak from experience, but I do know that that is something that happens. I'm not a professional psychiatrist, psychiatrist or a therapist, so I'm not going to give you guys advice on how to deal with your emotional distress, but I just want to make this video to clarify that I too am experiencing uh, problems, mental problems, mental issues. Uh, I've talked a little bit about it here on the channel and I get comments saying, hey, you know, I'm not doing so well. I'm kind of going through this rough patch and your videos made me, you know, feel great. And thank you so much for just making this. And uh, my goal is to make these types of videos for, for you guys. I want to relate to y'all and I want to talk about topics like this, right? Mental strength and physical strength. And, you know, it's okay to go ask for assistance. It's okay to go talk to someone about your feelings. And it's okay to feel like you don't belong because everyone, you know, it goes through it once and twice in their life. It's not something that we all go through at the same time, right? We're not all simultaneously linked telepathically, being able to understand one another. We can't read minds. I can't read yours and you can't read mine. So that's just. It makes a difference, right, to talk to someone. I have noticed this too. Like I said, uh, me talking about a problem that I went through not too long ago, uh, like actually like a few days ago, I, um, I've, I felt less stressed about it uh, because I just had a talk with a professional and I talked to a few of my people that I work with about it and everyone's given me different uh, pieces of information uh, they've provided support in some way, shape, or form, whether it just be listening. Uh, some people give me some really good advice, and some people have given me like pretty, pretty okay, straightforward. Like here's what's here, you know, here's what to expect, kind of advice, and uh, that includes even my uh, people above me in terms of my job. You know, the the leadership, I guess they uh, they've helped me out and have given me a reason not to do anything irrational. I, like you make mistakes, right? And sometimes m being mentally fortified is just so exhausting and you kind of crack under pressure and any, you know, slight inconvenience can ultimately shift your mood. And I've dealt with that my whole life, right? I, I, where I'm like having a great day back and forth and then one minor inconvenience can completely shatter your your mood and change you, change your perspective on the day. And uh, I've I've never thought that that was irrationally diff or not normal or irrational. I always thought that that's just how it was and that's how reality is. But you know, it turns out that uh, no, there there is uh, there is problems that go further beneath the 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 surface of it that kind of make me realize that I'm not so normal, you know. And and to be honest, nobody is. All right, and uh, let, let's let's quickly explain, or let's go over the idea of taking too much of emotional strength and being too emotionally strong. Now, I know that may seem a little weird. Like, wouldn't you want to be way more emotionally strong than anyone else? Yes and no, but you see, uh, a lot of people get confused with emotional strength and like integrity, or I guess in this case, elasticity, with hiding your true feelings. You know, you've got people and you got characters in movies, I think is a good example, who are just hiding behind a shell of ignorance, uh, arrogance, maybe aggress aggression. Maybe they're just kind of mean and unlikable and they do mean things to others. But in actuality, they, they genuinely do care about others, but they can't express it because they're afraid because of some event that has happened. Stuff like that really does sit with me. Not as uh not as often or not as uh, not often do I get to see or watch or observe somebody or a character in this case uh, go through very emotional uh, problems that are very similar to mine right I'm uh, I'm kind of like that as well I'm not gonna lie I'm not gonna sit here and say oh I, you know I'm I'm not like that I'm perfect I I I always explain my issues no I still have a big problem with trust 
I have a lot of trust issues when it comes to talking about my feelings and emotions. And it's hard to open yourself up, especially if you've never done it for years and then you just all of a sudden have to start doing it. That in itself is pretty challenging. But, you know, I just wanted to make that quick little video about that. I want to talk about something like this because uh, it's kind of went over my mind for the last few days. I've been really thinking about it. So, yeah, thank you all for watching this video. If you all like this video, hit that like button, subscribe for more, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.